Welcome back. Last time we discussed the life of Suhrawardi and his magnum opus, Hikmat al Ishraq. Now we want to discuss it and his thought in more detail. The Hikmat al Ishraq is the only book that we have in the history of philosophy that begins with logic and ends with ecstasy. Now, according to the doctrine of Ishraq, there's an equation between light and being. That is its central doctrine. That is, light is being, and being is light. This simple statement needs 30 years to understand, but since we don't have 30 years, I can give you only a very brief explanation. What does this statement mean? Rather than starting with logic, as Suhrawardi does, the quickest way to explain it is with reference to two elements of the Qur'an and the Hadith, that directly allude to this doctrine. First of all, the Quran explicitly states that God is the light of the heavens and the earth. Allahu nur samawati wal ard, the famous light verse. He's not only the light of heaven, he's the light of the earth. This is complemented by the famous hadith of the Prophet, al ilmu nuran, that is, knowledge is light which is the second half of the equation of illumination. That is, illumination equates knowing with light. So you have light equals existence, light equals knowledge. Therefore, you might say, knowledge is being, and being is knowledge. That's the consequence of this doctrine. I can hardly overemphasize for you the significance of this. But to fully penetrate into it needs a great deal of thinking and studying and meditation. So let's try in very simple terms to understand what it means. First of all, to turn to the first equation, that is, being is light. Now, Suhrawardi does not consider light to be only physical light. Physical light is only one level of the reality of light. Here, Surawardi introduces an element into philosophy that has never been discussed by either the Greeks or by Ibn Sina. And that's the question, what is it that causes difference? How can we distinguish between two things, A and B? This, in Aristotelian philosophy, was always called specific difference. For example, man is a rational animal. A horse is, let's say, a running animal. The difference is that we are rational. Now, Surawardi says there's another way in which things are distinguished from one another. That is, a possible distinction in which what makes two things alike is what also distinguishes them from each other. It's strange that people did not come up with this idea philosophically before. Maybe somebody did but it's not in philosophical texts. And what would be the example of that? The best example of that is light. Surawardi says that light is a single reality. The light of the candle and the light of, let's say, the bulb are both light, but they're also distinguished from each other by none other than lightness. One is weak light, one is strong light. So what distinguishes the light of the candle from the light of the sun is nothing other than what joins the candle to the light of the sun. So you have the possibility, Suhrawardi says, ontologically, not only in the physical world, but in the whole of the cosmos, to have a reality which participates in grades. And the grades are distinguished from each other by that which is none other than what unites them together. And so there's a single reality, he says, that's called light, nur. And this nur participates in gradation, of which only the lowest and the dimmest is what we call physical light. That's already combined to a large extent with darkness. You have the supreme light, which is the name he gives to God, nur al-anwar, the light of lights. And then you have the vertical descent of grades of light, a vertical hierarchy, starting with the archangelic and angelic worlds. And then as the light gets dimmer, 
you enter into the psychological and physical worlds, all of it descending from the Nur al-Anwar, which transcends everything. And since light is being, to the extent that we exist, we are light. All darkness is really the shadow of light, its non-existence. So for Sohrawardi, physical light is simply a lower manifestation of the higher lights, which includes those in the psychic world, and then higher than that, the intelligible world, the angelic world and the archangelic world, and finally, the divine light, which is infinite, and which emanates all of these levels of reality without itself being affected by them. The sun is a perfect symbol of this, and it's here that Sohrawardi takes many symbolic teachings of ancient philosophies and religions of Iran and incorporates them into an Islamic framework. Now, within the soul of a human being, our soul, all of these levels are present. That is, we are in a position to go back all the way to the Nur al-Anwar because the soul itself is the direct manifestation of the divine light in this world. Now, in order to reach the world of lights, Sohrawardi says that we need to cultivate not only our mental faculties, but also our faculty of receptivity of the divine light, of the angelic ones, that is, purification. This has always been a well-known religious and philosophical doctrine. For example, in Plato's Republic that you studied in Xavier's Philosophy 100, we find Socrates saying, quote, by pursuing certain philosophical studies, a certain organ in every student's soul is cleansed and rekindled, which has been blinded and destroyed by his other pursuits. Yet it is more worth saving than a thousand eyes, for by this organ alone is the truth perceived. Equally, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. The heart here is the seat of the intellect, not just the emotions, for inward vision. And the Quran asks, quote, Have they not journeyed upon the earth that they might have hearts by which to understand or ears by which to hear? Truly, it is not the eyes that go blind, but it is hearts within the breasts that go blind. Unquote. Spiritual realities and truths from God can be seen through the intellect, which is a sacred divine instrument that is the principle of reason and is related to the instrument of revelation itself, as previously discussed. This concludes this segment of the doctrine of Ishraq. In the next segment, we'll further clarify the distinction between reason and intellect, Learn what Sohrawardi says are the necessary steps for us to reach the world of lights and what the equation between knowledge and being implies for God's knowledge of particulars.